Gary Tyson, an inmate of Arizona State Prison, spent time behind bars for most of his life for numerous felonies. Tyson always dreamt of escape. A foolish warden would unknowingly help Tyson in accomplishing his goal by simply putting trust in such a man. On July 30th, 1978, Tyson's three sons would help him and a fellow convict break out, leading them on a treacherous journey for freedom while taking the lives of the innocent along the way. They were finally caught weeks later after tragedy struck, teaching prison wardens across the country not to put trust in the deceitful. In the early to late 1960s, America underwent a ton of change in many areas, such as politics, music, and society in general. Life was very shaky and unpredictable then, with a lot of issues going on like the civil rights protests on racial injustice and hippie protests on the Vietnam War. America was evolving and maturing, leading people on triumphant lives even if tragedy was needed for these changes to take place. For example, the horrific assassination of President John F. Kennedy and the cruel mistreatment of African Americans. In the end, tragedy is a crucial part for any important changes to take place. Gary Jean Tyson, a troubled man from the Penal County area in Arizona, was a stone-cold criminal sent to prison multiple times for various reasons, such as passing bad checks and robbing grocery stores and armories, one of which sentences was for life after Tyson murdered officer Jim Steiner who was taking him to prison in 1964. Most of these prison sentences were usually followed by various escape attempts, which ultimately failed and extending his sentence. Tyson spent years away from home and his family, and finally decided he needed to get out. Over the next few weeks, he attempted to persuade and manipulate prison officials into thinking he changed himself. Seeming he was ready to turn his life around, Tyson triumphantly managed to swindle prison officials, causing a reward that would get him one step closer to his objective. He was given an office with a desk and telephone, giving him much greater access to the outside world. In an interview with a civilian reporter, Tyson said, I got a wife and three kids. I want to get out someday and I know that the only privileges that you get from the man come from working for others and accepting responsibility. Tyson's plan to retain a good social status was so far successful. A short time after, an opportunity would spring up that Tyson would take without hesitation. Robert Tuzon, a man put behind bars for the alleged murder of his brother-in-law. On his first day in prison, he very quickly took notice of the man in charge, Gary Tyson. Tuzon soon met Gary when he was put to work in the kitchen with him. Tyson was eager to meet him as he knew he could play a great role in his plan, a triumphant escape. Tyson proposed his plan to Tuzon, asking him to fly his escape plane since he had experience as a pilot. Tuzon reluctantly declined, but Tyson, not willing to take no as an answer, showed up the next week with eerie photographs of his wife and kids threatening to kill them if he did not fly the plane. I took pictures, there's a picture showing a guy following the kids home from school. He said, uh, before you can do anything, we, we, they'll be gone. Forcing Tuzon to agree to take part in the escape. Tyson took Tuzon through training and a lot of planning out. Tyson said the plan was to steal a couple million dollars worth of weapons from the Casa Grande Armory and fly the cargo to Costa Rica to sell on the black market. But Tuzon had other plans. If I had to escape with them and them guys, I was just going to crash the plane. There's no way I'm going to go out and kill six guards and be something I'm not. Unwilling to take part in Tyson's mad mind, he took wire cutters out of the garden shed and broke the chain holding the courtyard gate shut. Tuzon then made a run for it, attempting to get to the Department of Public Safety office to snitch out on Tyson's plan, but he was quickly stopped in his tracks by guards with dogs. When brought to the warden's office, he was pleased to hear he was being moved to the maximum security wing for attempting to escape, and better yet, away from Gary Tyson. A few weeks later, Tuzon heard sirens going off. I don't know why, but I just had a feeling that was Gary just escaped. 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 On July 30th, 1978, Donald, Ricky, and Raymond Tyson would break their father, Gary Tyson, out of the Arizona State Prison 
along with fellow inmate Randy Greenewalt. They fled from the prison in a green Ford LTD. At a hospital nearby, they would steal a black Lincoln Continental and continue their journey to Mexico. 25 miles south of Quartzville, Arizona, their car got a flat tire leaving them on the side of the road in hopes for another ride until U.S. Marine John Lyons and his family of three were coming home from a party and saw the Lincoln Continental on the side of the road and pulled over to help. Tyson, acquainted by Greenewalt, came out of the bushes and ambushed the family, forcing them out of the car and into the Lincoln and drew their guns. The family, pleading for mercy, offered everything they had to stay alive, but their pleas of mercy came to no avail. The two men opened fire on the family, instantly killing John, his wife Donelda, and his 22-month-old son Christopher after a bullet went through Donelda and into Christopher's head, leaving Lyon's 15-year-old niece, Teresa Tyson, wounded. Teresa would attempt to crawl away to safety, but would lead her bleed out and die near a bush. The gang left with the family's orange Mazda and traveled northward to Flagstaff. When they arrived in Flagstaff, a friend of Greenewalt equipped them with a truck and ammunition. Their next plan was to get to New Mexico, ditch the truck and steal a plane, but the plan wound up being deserted and they drove to Colorado and killed a newlywed couple from Texas on their honeymoon and stole their van. They would then travel back south toward Mexico, taking back roads and staying out of the eye of authority. Little did the gang know, multiple police roadblocks would be waiting for them until about 2.45 a.m. on August 11th, where they would slow down at a roadblock and open fire and ram through the squad cars at 90 miles an hour. And about six more miles, another roadblock came into their path and the officers opened fire, killing the driver, Donald Tyson, from a shot to the forehead, causing the van to veer off the road and into a ditch. It's everyone for himself, Gary Tyson said as he attempted to escape, leaving the other three men to be arrested and taken into custody. Gary was nowhere to be seen until about two weeks later where he would be found laying in the middle of the desert, dead of heat stroke. After the horrifying events that put the state of Arizona in a panic, Tyson's three sons and Randy Greenewalt were taken into custody. Greenewalt was sentenced to death and he was executed by lethal injection in 1997. Raymond and Ricky Tyson were initially sentenced to death in 1989, but the sentence would be changed to a life sentence in 1992. And inmate Robert Tuzon was granted parole for his good deed of telling officials of Tyson's plan. Shortly after the events took place, Warden Harold Cardwell of the Arizona State Prison would be removed by Governor Bruce Babbitt as Cardwell had failed to prevent the escape. The state of Arizona took notice of the large amount of corruption in their prison facilities and began to put numerous reforms and changes into action to avoid making any escape of that nature possible again.